morning, welcome. Um, I'm here, you know, if you don't know me, I'm John Lane, Principal of Garner Elementary. Um, and, you know, Jill and, and then Jessica. And this is... Kelly Krasinski. Okay, and she is a teacher consultant from the, with the ISD. Yes. Right? Okay. So, she's really going to do most of the talking today, and she's going to be talking about PBIS, or Positive Behavior Intervention Supports, and how that reflects onto uh, the bus, or in the bus. So... As you probably know, or maybe you don't know, the schools, all the schools have this matrices about positive behavior support and how it looks in the school. And one of the components is that in that is the bus. So I don't know if you remember, but in the beginning of the year, we all, all the, at least the elementary, I'm about the middle school, the high school, but the elementary always ask for a bus to be parked out front one of the days and it's there all day. Well, that's the day that we're going around to all of our stations and teaching this, the students our expectations, and one of one of the stations is the bus, and the expectation about staying in their seat, not going in the aisle. And I know, you know, just like when we talk about in the hallway, yeah, they're supposed to walk, but do they run? Yeah, they do. So we always have those problem behaviors that we have to address in some way. So, but the first thing you have to do is you have to teach the expectation. What do we expect you to do? And then when you then you start working from there. So that's what that's what Kelly's going to talk about with you today. Um, I am just here for a brief moment, and then I have to get back to my building, but I'm here to talk briefly about write-ups. So I asked the principals, okay, do you have any concerns? Do you have anything you want, want me to bring up, anything with the drivers? We're going to be all meeting together. You know, uh, we have a write-up system where, where you write them up, and then they get put on probation, and then they get another write-up, and at that point, it's up to the principal to decide what's going to happen. Typically, unless it's a fight, I like to give them one more warning, um, and then they start getting suspended from the box which is a punitive system, but nonetheless, they're in a, in, in a, in a, in a confined area uh, with extreme safety issues that we have to take into consideration. So, you know, when you're walking down the hall and you're breaking rules, that's a little different than when you're breaking the rules and the driver, you know, they go, well, it was just in the aisle. Well, but the driver's eyes are up and they're looking around and they're not watching the road and, and, and it's, it's, a, it's a tough thing for a driver for you guys. I don't know how you do it, to be honest with you, but uh, it's a tough thing to be having to deal with behavior issues on the bus and also keep everyone on that bus safe. And, and so, so we all appreciate the job that you do with your students um, on the bus. And I got from, from the principals, basically, we're good. So I think principals are good with the referral system that we have in terms of you communicating with us on the problems that you're having, especially when you when you have problems that you no longer think you, sh you need to deal with or it's just getting to be too complicated or it's just too much. Like the kid who keeps wanting to climb over the seat and every day you're addressing it with you but then, they, but then you're addressing it with them but then they're not listening to you. So then it's time to refer them and you write them up. So I think the principals are good with that communication, what's going on. Um, and I know that I try to deal with them as promptly as I possibly can and try to get the paperwork back, but, you know, sometimes I mean, sometimes I even get the wrong paperwork to me too. So you know, it's just a it's just a learning system, and, and we're we're all doing the best that we can, which I think is good. But what I want to talk to you about briefly about is just a reminder about your referrals. So when you're writing a referral, you have to remember that it's a public document. So it can be, it is a it's an educational record, which means it can be FOIA, which means that someone could ask for that record. And yeah, we would take out people's names and that kind of thing, but anybody could ask for those records. Okay, so when you're writing them, be conscious of that. Now, my write-ups that I get at Garner, and I can't remember really when I was at LaCure any problems either, but it's just a good reminder to remember that. Uh, okay, so write-ups that I'm getting, I'm not seeing anything that I'd be concerned about, and if I did, maybe I'd say something to you or not. But the only thing I would caution you about is, other than the student who's being written up, I would caution you about putting any other names in there. So if there's other names that need to be mentioned, you can either send it in an email, give me a call, or call the principal, and I've had people do that before. Um, or, hey, this happened, I'm not really sure. Um, or, BB, <laughs> come over to the bus, hey, I got this problem, and then we decide what we're going to do with it, you know, at that moment. And that's, all of those things I think the principals are good with and everything, but when you're doing the write-up, just remember that it's a public document, so anybody could look at that, and um, so just keep the student who who you're writing up, if you're going to write their name in there, go ahead and write their name in there, but don't write anybody else's, and then we'll find out from you who the other student is. Like when I do my write-ups in Synergy, after I deal with, with whatever I'm dealing with, it doesn't matter if it's bus write-up or something else, and it's with another student, so sometimes I'll write other students. So 
Billy had a Billy punched another student in school. Da, 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 da. And then I'll go and I'll go to that student and say, Sally was punched by another student in school. So that I keep it generic. Sometimes I think if we start getting into a bullying situation, it's a little different. You don't have to worry about that. But just remember that that's a public document. Okay? So that's really what I have to say for you. Do you have any questions for me or anything? Yeah. When you said principals, are you talking school wide? I, I emailed every principal um, three different times, and I, and I spoke to every principal twice and said, if you have any concerns or anything, let me know because I'm going to be talking to the bus drivers, and no one ever got back to me other than and whoever got back to me and those who responded said, we're good. So hopefully, hopefully that they didn't just blow something off because this is a great venue when everybody's here if we had a problem to, to talk about it. But I, the way it seems to me, I know my building, I think it's going good. So I don't know about other buildings, but nobody got back with me with any issues that they thought they were too sometimes. What's that? We have that problem also sometimes, too. Nobody, you, you don't get the return. Yeah, sometimes yeah. it's a little slower. There was, like, I'll tell you, there was, a, there, was a, uh, there was a month earlier in the school year where it seemed like I was getting two or three write-ups every day. Yeah, that's going to go a little slower because... You have to remember that I don't I don't have all day to spend just on bus referrals. I'm also running a, uh, and that's with all of the principals and all of the buildings. So it gets to be gets takes a little bit of time sometimes, but we we do send them back as soon as we can. Middle school is good for this, and I think y'all agree with me. We'll write a student up, and it they need to be taken off the bus, and they are. We get the write up two weeks later and find out that little Johnny was off the bus two days, and we thought he was out sick. You know, we need right. to know if a student, because you're sitting at the, their driveway going, ah, where's he at? You know? Oh, right, right, right. So yes. sometimes and that is, get the that is a problem, and I don't know. Middle school's really yeah. good for it. Well, even even with me, you know, so if I take a kid off the bus for tomorrow, unless I catch the driver, I'll try to tell the driver, you know, in the evening run, hey, Bill's off the bus for tomorrow. Okay, thanks, and, you know, or whatever for the next night. But sometimes it doesn't happen that way. Sometimes I'm not there, you can't get out. But that would be a problem, so I can bring that up. Yeah, yeah. Be that. Like email the, the could let Debbie know, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Or like she could, she could let you know, or you know. Yeah, because I mean, two weeks later, you're trying to figure out. Well, did they even do anything to this kid? And find out. Oh well, yeah, I had him off such and such date. Well, thanks for letting me know. We're thinking he's out sick. We're right. not thinking the child's been punished. Right. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, thanks everyone. I hope you enjoy your day. Uh, this is a different frame set for your mind, just so you know. Um, it's called positive behavior, not because it was because those are the behaviors we expect and how we deal with them is differently than, than just punitive. And we've only really done a punitive system um, with buses, okay? Um, and, and you still have to have that component in there. There's always going to be a consequence, but there's also different ways that you can deal with issues that I think could be hopefully beneficial to you and definitely beneficial to the kids as we teach them our expectations and then start to hold them to those, those expectations. So that, Kelly? Thank you. Thanks. Um, as you said, my name is Kelly Kruzinski. I'm from the ISD. I'm a teacher consultant for special education. I wear multiple different hats. I'm a trainer for positive behavior support. Um, I work with a lot of IEPs, uh, literacy, um, ASD students. Um, so, multiple different hands. Mm -hmm. But today we're going to talk about positive uh, behavior interventions for support um, for transportation. And how does it link to what is happening into the school? Because the school has a system and the buses are part of that system. So how can we get everybody aligned, everybody linking and communicating? Um, so we all are speaking the same language and have the same understanding for today. So our goal is to increase awareness of PBIS and increase PBIS to take place on the buses. And then what are our next steps? Just talking uh, with the principal and Jessica, there are a couple things that are missing right now. So how can we start talking about them now? So in the fall, um, we can start the year off with implementing some new things. So what is positive behavior support? It's a, a broad range of systematic and individualized strategies for achieving important social and learning outcomes while preventing behavior problems. So really, PBIS is a prevention. We want to prevent behaviors from happening. 
So if we know um, that behaviors are going to take place, like on the buses, we probably know that kids are gonna get up out of their seat and change seats, right? Something that typically happens. Um, so if we can pre-correct that and we can teach expectations before the start of the school and then reteach after break, etc., we're going to probably prevent some of that stuff from happening on the bus. So it's really a lot of prevention work and then creating a system. Because if we have a system in place, there's always a process. And then everyone follows that system and process. And the kids will know what is expected of them as well. Same thing as the parents will um, know too. Um, I love this slide. So if it says, if a child doesn't know how, so if a child doesn't know how to read, what do we do? We teach the students, right? If a child doesn't know how to swim, we teach. If a child doesn't know how to multiply, we teach. If a child doesn't know how to drive, we teach. And that was a big one for me because my daughter is taking driver's training. Never, I never want her to get out there and be like, oh, I got my license and start driving. No, we teach, we teach, we teach. And if a child doesn't know how to behave, what do we do? What typically happens? We punish, right? We don't teach. And our students, you guys have little ones all the way up to those seniors. We still have to teach. Even those seniors that are 17, 18 years old, we still have to teach. Um, and there's research behind that with the adolescent brain. It's not fully developed yet. Not until late 20s does the adolescent brain fully develop. So kids that are 22 years old, their brain isn't fully developed. And what I mean by that is um, their frontal lobe doesn't fully develop, so that means their executive functioning skills, their ability to control impulsivity, their ability to organize ideas, um, make decisions. Uh, there's a lot of, they'll do a lot of risky things where we as adults sit back and go, yeah, I'm probably not gonna do that, where they will automatically do it because of sensation or they want to get recognition and from their peers, but impulsivity is huge. In the moment, they're going to do something. They're probably going to make that wrong <coughs> choice, but not in the moment. Could you sit back and say, was that the right or wrong thing to do? And they would tell you, no, that was wrong. But in the moment, they don't have that ability to make the right judgment call. So that's all part of that adolescent brain. And that's a lot of our, that's a lot of our older kids, our, our seniors. Especially in high school, teachers are the worst. They're like, they should know, they should know. And I'm like, they don't. We still have to teach. So behavior, we absolutely still have to teach behavior. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. So our students, they need us. And this first quote, um, kind of really sticks out to me. It says, 24% of our students who drop out of school are unable to identify an adult in the school, and it's in the school system, anybody in the school system, um, by whom they feel supported. 24%. Do you know what the leading cause of youth death is? The second leading cause? Suicide. 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 So 24%, this is like in 2006, and I'm sure it's probably even higher now, cannot identify one adult in the school system that they feel comfortable with and feel supported by. Makes us sad. So in, a, in preschool, if these kids are demonstrating behavior problems, and then that's going to persist into elementary, right? And then they are at risk for disengagement, for more behavior problems to, help, or to start happening, and then their school failure, and then their social email adjustment, which they're going to make those bad decisions and continue. They're going to be probably defiant, etc. And then, so that's going to continue. So even when they get high school, is it going to be fixed? No, it's only going to get worse. It's going to increase. And then 20% um, of our children and youth have clearly identified a need for mental health service, but only a third of them have ever received any help at all. Genesee County, it's mental health is a major issue right now with our kids. So that's just some um, research, some data to show we do need PBIS in our school systems. Um, we need to change our mindset, and that is hard. It's very, very hard. And back in 2006, our state said that our school policy has to put in behavior, um, positive behavior support. So we had to change our mindset and start thinking about that. In 2006, schools had to start adapting some of these policies. Um, so it started a little bit, and now we have a state committee. There's some stuff happening at the state that is teaching schools, et cetera. 
and it's trampling down. So um, this just says school climate studies uh, conducted with student population with the United States internationally have consistently suggested safe and caring responsive school environments um, has an effect on student perception of the school. Um, and that's true. If our students feel safe and welcomed, do they have a better attitude? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And does the climate change within a school? It does. Um, I was at a training and it said, you have three things. You have staff, and when I say staff, I mean all staff. You have staff behavior, staff attitude, and student outcomes. <coughs> what has to happen first? So what comes first, second, and third out of those three things? Staff behavior, staff attitude, student outcomes. What do you guys think? Well, at what way do you think it goes? In that order. No, no. Attitude first. Attitude first. Oh, attitude <laughs> first. Yeah. You think attitude first? No, I think behavior first. You think behavior first? Mm -hmm. Anybody at one do you think student outcomes come? Yeah. After that. <laughs> because if you're going to have a child get on your bus, you know, that right there's your behavior. You know, and then they get uh, not staying in their seat, you're like, <coughs> Right. You know, so I would say the attitude and the outcome. And that's what most everyone says. But it really goes with staff behavior. So we need to change our staff behavior first, and that's school-wide. So our behavior needs to change. Our mindset has to change. We're going to do some positive, preventative stuff instead of punish, punish, punish. And then we're going to have student outcomes because the climate's going to change. They're, the kids are going to feel safe and welcomed. They're going to build these relationships, right? So student <coughs> outcome is going to change. So once we see that there's a positive effect, what happens to our attitudes? Our attitudes change. So it's behavior. We're going to see some positive results, and that's going to change our attitude. Okay? And that's research-based. That's educational research-based. Um, so that's kind of what that is. So you guys have your guided notes. Um, so I want you to kind of think real quick, why do students have behaviors? Why are they acting out? Why do they have behaviors? Yeah. So, so why do kids have behaviors? Jot down a couple ideas. So why kids have behaviors? Control 
is when they'll when for you when those students step on the bus, right? And the first thing that we can control is give them that positive welcoming environment. And that's creating connections and relationships. So behavior is communication. It is communicating. And it also serves as a function. So the first one is behavior is communication, and behavior serves a function. So you think about babies. Okay, everyone's been around a crying baby before, right? They cry. Why do babies cry? They need their diaper changed, they want to be fed, they want to be held, right? Same thing as today. These 15-year-old kids, they have behaviors because it's communication and it serves as a function. In the classroom, it's probably academics are too hard or et cetera. But when on the bus, it's probably who's sitting around them or what environment they just came, came from. Or are they scared to death to go to school that day because there's a test and they know they're going to bomb it? Or they have such high anxiety about even stepping foot into the school, so they start acting out on the bus. Okay, so what is going on? It serves as a, um, as a function. Uh, and also it's influenced by like, some of the things you talked about. Well, we all know if the kid is sick, earache, et cetera, they're probably going to behave. Ooh, it's a touch screen, huh? Um, outside factors, relationships, patterns, and lifestyles, and it's always related to its environment. High school kids, you get into those relationships, boyfriend, girlfriend type things. Um, girls, there's a lot of drama, social, um, social media, Facebook, Snapchat, etc. I think if I went to high schools and said, hey, for the uh, female population, what is the biggest trigger? And I'll say social media. Um, so we talked about how behaviors learned is a function. Um, they learn some, a certain desire, and most likely they are able to get it. Okay, because um, behavior continues because behavior works. If you have that crying kid in the grocery line, and they're crying, I want some candy, I want some candy, and the parent buys them the candy, what are they going to do next time? Right. Same thing. I met me mom that says no, um, and then they continue crying for like two seconds, and they know they're not going to get it, and then they stop. But. Uh, but it continues, and it's and the more behavior, the more behavior that you attend to, the more behavior you're going to see. So if I keep giving the candy bars and I keep addressing the crying at the store, I'm going to see more of that crying, right? On the bus, if we keep talking about stop talking, stop talking, stop talking, quiet down, stay in your seat, stay in your seat, you're you're like a it's a repeating record, right? We're going to keep seeing those behaviors. So how do we address it differently? And that's what we're going to kind of talk about. That's what we're going to get to. So there's this little cartoon with Trixie here. She's like, this is great. I'll have to wake up crying in the middle of the night more often. And there she is, snuggled up with mom and dad, right? And I kid you not, I mean, I did not. I, the first time I ever saw this, I'm like, oh my god, does this have my name written on it? Because that was my kid up in, my youngest one up until she was five. Um, I had to put a plan in action where she slept on the floor, mm -hmm. and did some little stars on a chart, and then she eventually slept in a room in a teepee, not in her bed, in a teepee. <laughs> did some stars, and now she's in her bed. But that was her. And part of it was, I was reinforcing myself as well, because I didn't have to play musical beds. I could stay in my bed, sleep all night, I didn't have to get up. So I was reinforcing myself, why I was negatively reinforcing her, because I was giving her exactly what she wanted, <coughs> instead of teaching or actually addressing the problem. Um, and it happens a lot. We reinforce ourselves, and it's like, yes, we feel good. It's a fix for us, right? Um, but we're not addressing the problem. Um, so we talked about this a little bit. Behavior serves as, I'm not going to go through this. We already did this. I don't watch any of this. Actually, I do want to Last one. Children comply with 80, with the rules, 80% of the time. However, they, um, are complemented for their behaviors less than even half that time. So kids that are 80% with the rules or expectations, they're not acknowledged. And remember I said the behavior we tend to the most will be the behavior that we will get more of. So if we're attending and we're acknowledging the things that they are doing correct, what are we going to see more of? The behaviors that we desire to see. Um, so. Again, it's that shift in philosophy, it's that mindset, and it's hard. Because it's 
is saying the key, uh, the key question in respect to PBIS is not a, what about the student that is causing the problem, but what about the interaction with the curriculum, instruction, learners, and le learning environment should be altered so we can um, have students be successful. So usually, in the way to think, we used to think is, what about the students causing the problem? Is what about the environment? What is happening that is really the issue? Um, and it's hard to swallow because really it's saying, what do we need to do to change? And that's hard to think that we need to alter some things that we are doing so we can change kids' behavior. My grandma, 90 years old, and still acting like she's 23, um, she was in the educational system and she worked with emotionally impaired kids. Uh, so if you know emotionally impaired, those are kids that have some severe behaviors. And she will always say, Kelly, do you work with those bad kids? I'm like, Grandma, they're not bad. She's like, you know the ones that can never make a right decision? I'm like, they're not bad. So, I even, so I'm getting through this. I'm trying to get her to change her mindset at 90, and that's really, really hard. Um, but I'm like, it wasn't that they were, they were bad. It was stuff that was happening around them that really affect their behavior. Yes? I have a question on that. With um, a lot of our students have um, EIPs. IEPs. IEP, sorry, I said that better. No, you're good. Um, and we're not allowed legally to be made aware of those things. So if we were, we might be able to react a little bit, react a little bit differently or maybe know how to talk to the child in a different way than um, which isn't fair to us since we're technically. Nope, I totally agree with you. Um, so you can be aware of a student with an IEP and know how to work with that student, know what some of those deficits are. I mean, if it's a learning disability and it's math or reading, really no need to. Right, yeah. But if it's behaviors or there's triggers, like um, if she has an IEP and her trigger is if she sits around a bunch of students, another student, and she sits close to other students, it starts triggering her and she's going to start getting aggressive or start right. yelling. You should definitely 100% know that well, because, don't because there's ways to interact with her. Right. So that morning on the bus, when she gets on that bus, she's sitting with kids and you have no idea, right? She's already triggered right. and then her yeah. day is just like... See, I've got one yeah. that is triggered. So how do we find them? How do we... We find them after the fact. Yeah. So, I, so that's something I can um, talk to Jessica about and see how um, you guys are aware of that. Because there's kids with behavior plans. Right. Um, you know, that one. makes it hard for so so. So, oh, yeah. so, so, that will be a, so that will be a system issue that I cannot change for you. It's right. really going to be have to, Jessica and the principals talking with you guys. But um, one example would be if there's kids with behavior plans, you have like a um, binder or something. Receiving chart you can put yeah, on there. Yeah, exactly. So, and you can, I don't know how you guys, what subs come. Um, on the bus that day, if they get any, do you guys provide it? Is there anything provided for yeah, them? Yeah, like a map. Maybe we can yeah, put it on map. I've seen Jerry. So, I drove for class for 22 years before I subbed here, so I pretty much know the page. So it could be like a star or something. However you guys want to do that, then I can talk to Jessica. Yeah. Um, and let her know that it is one barrier that you guys use. Yeah. yeah, but you guys have, you guys are part of that kid system. So we are legally able to. Okay. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Um, so, the beginning part of you guys, this is all just kind of PBIS stuff, and we'll get into the bus stuff there in a, a little bit, but, uh, so how does PBIS affect students? It reduces um, suspensions, and we know that suspensions actually do harm to kids. There's this research that has this barometer, and it has like a zero to a one. Anything a point is, by percentages, point four to one has um, a great effect on kids' outcomes. There's zero, which is like in the red, and then you can go below zero, which is in the negatives. Suspensions have a negative 0.2 reverse positive effect on students. So it actually does harm to them. Suspensions do. And that's research-based. Students in PBIS schools are 32% likely to, um, less likely to receive office discipline referrals. So we're noticing even countywide schools that have PBIS into their system, we're seeing a reduction of suspensions because of the preventative work. 
And then um, a positive effect for school level, so academics are going up. We see a reduction in rejection and bullying. Um, the, they don't need to go to the counseling office as much, special education referrals and office referrals. We have a lot of those kids that every hour, every day, they are like, I need to go see the counselor. I have an issue. I need to go see that counselor again. But when we have some of these preventative and we're making connections and relationships, that stuff is going to go down. And there's um, less aggressive and destructive behavior. And then there's also improvements on the social behavior. And that's um, a big piece, the social and emotional. Because right now we're seeing countywide, that's a struggle for all of our kids in Genesee County. I think Clio has like a med meditation detention or something now I heard the kids talking about where they're like going to some like meditating thing. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. You know, at the high school. Oh, at, high school? Yeah. at the high school? I want to know about that. I want to learn about that. That's interesting. That's yeah. pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, again, we are talking about prevention and we want to provide behavioral interventions and supports that manage kids' needs. So we talked about how behavior can be changed. Environments can create behavior. Um, we all know that. You guys see that on a regular basis. Uh, adult behavior must change in consistent and a systematic manner. So if we're trying to change the kids' behavior and we don't change ours, is it going to work? No. No. So we have to change us first before we can create that the child um, to make change. And it's hard. Definitely hard. Um, I've been working with PBIS. I came from Swartz Creek Schools, um, and I was there for 16, 17 years. And we've been doing PBIS since like 2006 that I've been involved with it. Um, so and it, and it, it is hard until you can have a system that truly believes in preventative work with PBIS. Um, you're not going to see a lot of change. So that's why I say that it, it's it's a hard it's hard. Because that mindset has to change, and we have to change with adults first. Oh, let's see if that works. All right, here's a video. I have to go through. Does this have to be less time, I think? from my, um, my PowerPoint here. I don't know why. Is there a way you can turn that up a little bit? Get on the bus, they Thank hear you. the word safe, and respectful, job, responsible, and cooperative. Yes. And then when they get off the bus and they're walking down there, the you teachers can see that they're yeah. they not being safe, going into the building, teachers, coaches, janitors, everyone use the same verbiage they hear over and over and over with the same tone. And just remember, when you're at the bus stop, you're in the bus ride, and on the bus at school, please be safe. Respectful, responsible, and cooperative. Thank you, you guys are awesome, man. Have a wonderful day. That's the heart.
hardest part is being consistent and talking to a, a good student and a behavioral student and use the same tone. And after a while, they're like, wow, they see an adult and they hear uh, what you're trying to teach versus a screaming, an adult screaming all the time. Seeing a sad student or a student in distress or whatever situation in their life um, coming on a bus and just saying good morning, have a good day, and they don't respond, but you know you planted that seed. And then the greatest gratification is one day they get off, they get off the bus, they get on the bus and say, good morning, Mr. Bus Driver. And that's the greatest gratification for me because I get chills because you just plant a seed in that child, and I could be the only one that's being positive and showing them a, a positive structure and uh, seeing them kind of turn around, and I think uh, maybe that will give that student something to look forward to. I show them respect, and then in return, they show them in respect. So PBIS, in my heart, it works. It's not adult versus students anymore. It's we're all on the same team, and we all have one important commodity is teach students to make them safe and educate them in a positive way. So you're probably thinking, well, that is in Canada, right? PBIS happens nationally and internationally. There was just a conference in Washington, D.C. that was PBIS. Um, that was internationally. There was people from Finland, um, I mean, all over. I think there was someone from Japan that was there um, as well. And then you had the United States, um, which pretty much dominated the, the conference. But people from all over where they're talking about the same thing, the same process, the same system. So it's not just, oh, this is what Genesee County is doing. It's, this is what we're doing nationally. This is what's happening internationally. So that's why you um, see this from Vancouver. And I just really like that, um, the message and the video. Um, but you saw that he, did you just remember when getting off the bus, so he was doing pre-corrections. He was reminding the students what to do. So he's getting that pre-correct before the action will take place. So he's pre-correcting. And then he talked about how it's not uh, staff versus students anymore. It's we're all working together. Because PBIS is systematic. So that means all stakeholders. So it's for everyone. Um, in the school that I came from, we did it for staff, too. We acknowledged we did all these things for staff. So they were a part of the system. Um, and it, it worked. It absolutely worked. Kids were excited about it. Staff was excited about it. It took time for buy-in. Um, I came from the high school, so it definitely took time for high school teachers. To get <coughs> um, so on your paper, I want you right now to think about, uh, write down as many behavioral concerns that you have on your bus. So go ahead and the main ones. Main ones. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and write and think. Um, yeah, so maybe some big ones. Um, and it could be some of those everyday reoccurring ones. I don't know if you guys have like a no eating policy, but you have to keep reminding kids no food, no gum. I don't know. It could be those annoying behaviors that happen, happen consistently on a bus. Um, I know coming from my classrooms, those were the ones. It wasn't the big ones that bothered me. I call them the annoying behaviors that happen every day, all the time. Those ones were like a thorn to my side. Because it felt like are the big problems in there every day. Every day? All right. So go ahead and list them and then we're going <coughs> to share out here in a second. And we're not going to do elbow hurt now. We're going to do something else. <laughs> Does anybody not have any behavior problems? <laughs> you don't? <laughs> You're full of behavior. I have no behavior problems. <laughs> Although I don't drive a you bus don't drive because I don't yet. have a license yet. <laughs> <laughs> he just started oh training. <laughs> You've seen it on my bus. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I don't know how to correct that. <laughs> She's got good kids. She really does. Yeah. Don't just wait. That's because they have a guest on their bus, so they always behave. They yeah. know who it is. <laughs> well, that's an expectation. <laughs> Yes. 
Oh, yeah. Window breaking. Window breaking. Oh, I had a window breaking. That's like a natural consequence, right? right there. I got a bus now with a window breaking. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I, there's, I know I could not do it because I have sensory issues, and I'd probably like park the bus and then just run. Um, in gym class, I could never do a gym class either. The, the noise. So I'm not an expert whatsoever in your job. Um, so how do? We, and here, oh, here's some common ones. Same things that you guys talked about: loud talking, out of seat, disrespect to driver, bullying, throwing items. Um, and then, do we have? Common language, common procedures, consistent consequences, and consistently consistency with rules. Is that established? You guys have common language that you guys are all using? As all staff? You might use it in different words, but it comes the same. So do you guys have the be safe, be respectful, be responsible? Yeah. Okay. So, and you guys have common procedures. How do you deal with the kid that keeps crawling under the seats? Um, or consistent consequences. What are the consequences? What's considered a bus minor that you guys deal with? And what's con what is considered like a major that would be an office discipline referral that the school would deal with? You go underneath the seat, you're getting written up. So how, so, <laughs> exactly. Our tolerance Yeah, and exactly, because her, her, um, Respect might look differently on my boss as respect. Right. Okay. Yeah, um, right up so like right noise, up. noise levels. Obviously, I have the sensory issue, so my boss would have to be absolutely quiet. Yeah. Um, in her <laughs> noise um, level, it could be raised a little bit. Okay. So it all depends. We have, we're going to have those, have those um, constraints, whatever personal beliefs from ourselves. But what I want to know is, you guys have consistent consequences. So what is Bus managed is a minor, and then is there a minor that could be a school handled, and is there majors that are automatically to referral and office managed? So have those been spelled out? Have you guys seen anything like that? No. Okay. So that's what I'm getting at. So is there consistent consequences? No. Um, and would that be beneficial? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Almost like a... A steps? Yeah. Step system. Step system. Well, we're supposed to have a step system, but they don't follow really? it. Three strikes. If that yeah. makes sense. So they don't. Yeah, yeah but it's one and done. It's kind of great. Okay. So those are things that we're going to find out today. Like, so remember I said, like in the fall, can they start doing some training, um, talking about this stuff now, um, to put in place for the fall. So like in the schools, they have minors and majors, and then what is office managed versus um, staff managed. And then they have how to respond to some of those things. So would that be helpful for you guys? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay, perfect. That's what it actually happened. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's part of it's part of PIS. It's part of the system. And they wouldn't have you in here today if they didn't feel it was valuable. But <laughs> they need to be more consistent. Yeah, that's what we're getting at. <laughs> yeah, some consistency. Yeah. So behavior on the bus. So survey of 300 bus drivers. And this is what they're seeing as some of the, the big ones in the percentage. And moving on, in and out of 68% noise or rowdiness, 40 or 64. Rude, disrespect, 43, and fighting, hitting, 39. Uh, thumbs up if you, like, yeah, that's pretty agreeable, or thumbs down, like, yeah, no. I can deal with noise. My kids are good. Rowdiness is a little bit different. There's a difference. But has noises, right? So, what is the behavior 
What does it look like and sound like? And then what are some possible solutions? How, how, how did you tackle that behavior? What were some of the things that you did? And then we're going to report out. So what was the behavior? What did it look like, sound like? And then what are some possible solutions that took place or could, touch, could have took place? And then we'll share out. around him. 
Yeah. But one thing that I love that you started doing differently, or maybe continue more consistently, I guess I should say, um, is the praise. Mm -hmm. So you're acknowledging him for the desired behavior, and what did you see more of? Yeah, the, the good behavior. The good yeah. behavior. And he's talking to me more, too, this yes. week. Yes. So just that one little thing that she did made a difference. Now, is that going to work with all kids? Mm -hmm. I wish I could say yes. I, I tried it with another one, familiar. and she doesn't care. <laughs> so she just doesn't. I, cannot, I wish I could kid, say this is yeah. a yeah. fix-all, save-all for all kids. But no, we're still going to have some of those kids that are going to struggle. Um, but you found one that it worked with. Yeah. Um, and that was the only thing you had to do. But for the other one, it didn't work. There might need to be something a little bit more. So maybe she needs a visual, uh, like a star, or you yeah. know what I mean, of something that she's done well. Um, and one thing I want to say real quick is that there's this triangle. It's called the MTSS triangle, and you guys don't need to know all that. But there's three different layers to the triangle. There's tier one, tier two, and then tier three. Tier one is 80%. Um, so 80% of kids will be able to follow the expectations on your bus or in the school system if they're taught the expectations, if they're acknowledged, and all this, you do all the stuff. 80% of the kids will be okay with that. The second, the tier two, is about 15% of the kids need some type of intervention. So that could be maybe you have like a chart on your bus and you have to do the stars for maybe the one little girl or student. Um, so they need an intervention there. Then your tier three is about two to five percent, and that is individual support. They need intensive support, and it's all individualized. And that is only two to five percent. Um, so some of this work that we are, we want to start is hitting that eighty percent of of the kids. Um, so I have like my young one. I have a fifteen, a thirteen, and a seven. My seven-year-old comes home and she sings her expectation. They have sore. They're from Lily. Um, she sings this song. My middle child, who um, likes the sore, she's in uh, seventh grade. She talks about it all the time. My 15-year-old is your all-A student. She's a rule follower to the T. Like backseat driver, learning how to drive. She corrects me all the time. <laughs> um, so she's that kid. She's like, Mom, this sore stuff is so stupid. But she is that that 80%. You're probably even a this right at the bottom of that triangle that doesn't need the expectations because she's going to follow them no matter what you tell her to a T because she's that rule follower. <coughs> um, so you have some of those kids. But, huh? <laughs> My parents see her every day, but sure, I can, I can loan her off a little bit. Um, so we are really looking at trying to hit 80% of the kids with putting expectations on, on the boss. Putting acknowledgement on the bus. So hitting at least 80%. Are we going to hit all of them? No, we're not. And you guys have an unstructured environment, which even makes it harder. Because when they're in the classroom, it's a structured environment because they have that curriculum mm -hmm. to help manage they, in the instruction. But like in the hallways, cafeteria time, bus on the buses, getting on the buses, getting off the buses, that's all on structure time. And that's hard, and that's why we need like active supervision, and we really need a system in place. Because those kids need something. Um, and that's what we're um, trying to build with the guidance. So, and the reason why I wanted you guys to think about this is just kind of like playing out what happened, what took place, what happened before. And there's always an antecedent, which means what took place, what was that trigger because there's always something that triggers a behavior. There's an antecedent that takes place first. It's a trigger, then the behavior happens, and then we have a consequence or the response. How do we respond to that? And I say consequence because a lot of people want to use punishment. Punishment and consequence are two separate things. Punishment is taking something away, causing harm. Consequence offers teaching. And it could be a natural consequence. That's why I said the window liquor. Okay, it could be a natural consequence where they get sick, like severely sick. That's called yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, But that's a natural consequence. Another natural consequence would be the kid that keeps hitting kids, right, um, on the bus. No kids are going to want to sit around yeah, him. That's a natural consequence. Um, so natural consequences can happen. Punishment causes harm. And punishment never, ever, ever offers teaching. And there, I've looked 
and um, I've heard it from other people that do a lot of research. Um, they have never, now, there's not one piece of research that supports and says suspensions and expulsions do any good. There's no teaching. Now, we have, there's a big three. Does us um, good. <laughs> there's what? So it does us good. I know, but, but that's, that's, that's how we get, that's like me, not putting my kid in her bed, I am getting reinforced, right? Um, there's the big three, which is physical aggression, um, so assault, and your drugs and your uh, weapons. Those are the three big ones that, yes, they can go. Um, do suspension. <coughs> but there's no research that shows that um, suspensions help. So anyway, there's, because no there's no consequences no for their actions, no. but we have consequences for ours. Consequence is allowed for te there's teaching. So in policy studying last year in our policies for the state, we had to put, in, instead of just going suspension, suspension, suspension route, what are you doing before? Is what consequences, what, um, are you doing any restorative practices? Are you doing any uh, conferencing? conferencing? What are you doing before you go to suspensions? Now, I'm not saying you can never suspend, because there are some things that, yeah, we need, you know, you've got to go home for this. So I'm not saying that at all. But what are we doing before we hit that suspension? Yeah, but see, we're just suspending from the bus. We're not suspending them from school. Right. But you keep saying being sent home. Well, we don't send them home from our bus. So some kids, so let me do this. If kids get suspended from the bus, can some of them get to school? Not our problem. Right, but can they? <laughs> I don't know. So. Yes, their parents would take them. The parents could. But is there some kids, and I'm not saying, I'm yes, just talking. Yes, there are definitely some kids yeah. that yes. don't have transportation. Yes. So, if they don't have transportation or a way to get to school, what happens to their learning? We're well, they effective. don't. We're, we're, we're widening that gap. Right, but if they use that as an excuse, Every time they're to the point where they just cannot ride the bus because they are a danger to the other kids, the bus driver, what have you. So that would be. And how do does that get corrected where the child can get to school? So that would be a conversation with the principal and that family. Um, yeah, but because ninety nine percent of them they have rides. Right. Yes, it, it, but I mean, it's like how do you take but, care of that? 1% that don't. So if they, get, if they keep getting suspended, suspended off the box, right, I absolutely have a problem. If they keep getting removed. So what do we do beforehand? What can we do to fix that problem? But what if, I'm just going to stop because this is just going to go nowhere. <laughs> so it's all about, it's like, I'm a, if a kid get, keeps getting sent out of the classroom, mm -hmm. out, 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 <coughs> obviously we need to do something. We need to adjust. Either with this, fix something with that student, or create more teaching. So maybe that kid needs to come out to the bus with somebody and go over expectations on the bus. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You know, they got and then you, you can talk and yeah. blue in the face to some yeah. of these kids, and they just ain't gonna get it. As soon as, that is, most of them, as soon as they know that something like this is gonna happen, you know. They're just going to play the system. Oh, yeah. You, know, they're just gonna you play can't it, get so. me off this bus. My mom won't give you a job. Well, your mom can have my job. I'm now, sometimes they're calling their mom right. while you're on. So, again, this is all prevention work. Right. So, what do you guys have set up now for prevention? And we talked about the common language and consistency. Do you guys have that system set up? And right now, you guys don't. You guys don't have that system set up. So, how do we get that system set up? I guess I'm just a little bit confused because we do have rules and regulations. One of them is respect the bus driver. We do every day. We're telling the kids, sit down, do this, do that. We're constantly reminding them what is expected of, out of them. And the explanation so why what, you need to sit down. Why yeah. Miss Farm like has to stop the bus fast. Sit down, be safe. Guess where you're at. Thank you. Maybe we need like a third party, like somebody to come in and sit with that kid on that bus, stop the behavior. Oh before it affects us and other students. I know no, that's another job. That. I mean, no, this is a perfect okay. world. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah. But I'm exactly. just thinking outside the box. Like, right. Exactly. Right. Right. So, coming back, so coming back in, um, here. So those are, okay, so great ideas. Is that some, I can't, I can't right. decide that or do any right. of that. But, but I'm talking systems. So every school has a matrix, <coughs> behavioral matrix. Has anybody ever seen them in the school? It says pride. Yeah, pride. Yeah. Okay. And so on there, 
Las bosses. Do you guys know what they say? So what is being on what is on that matrix? You guys should have common language of what the schools are saying how you should behave on the bus. And when how so just by raising hands, elementaries or just give me a nod, yes. Elementaries have you bring a bus to the school, correct? Mm -hmm. And they get pull the kids on and this is how you behave, da da da, da right? Does middle school and high school do that? No. no. Okay. So those are some loopholes. That's what I'm talking about, that system, that common language, the consistency. But the matrix has buses on there. And what is it saying? When you like to say the same things as what the principal and the teachers are saying and vice versa? Because it's like a family. Like, if I say something and my husband says something differently, my kids would be all confused. And they'd probably go to my husband because he would probably be the, okay. Um, <laughs> But it would create it would create um, chaos or inconsistency, and so that's what we want is that system. There's a lot of things I can't I can just go with the overview, and these are things that should be in place. I can't make those changes. You know what I'd like to see? I'd like to see some of these parents literally get on the bus, take all the classes we need to take, go around by themselves, and see how little Susie and Johnny act. Then we maybe we, would, we used to get the support of parents. Right. Now everybody gets hurt over every little thing. That you're afraid they to even that. talk I to a student, let alone say, "Hey, you really need to sit down because you're My going to get hurt." Right. And that we don't want no one getting hurt on the bus. And what they do? They go home and, <coughs> and tell their parents, "She yelled at me and blah blah blah." And then who gets the phone call, Miss Jim? And who gets called in the office? Gotcha. I do. So, um, so with that is communicating with parents as well. Do the parents know these things as well? Um, I know one school for orientation, I mean, it was just only kindergarten, but only affected kindergarten parents. So the parents during kindergarten orientation, those parents had to get on that bus, and the parents were walked through the expectations of how they expect things to happen. So, some of the schools just send the kids on the bus with like one or two of the teachers, and then the parents are there filling out paperwork. They're not being put on the bus with the kids because there's not enough room. They, do it they used to at the because I used to. That's not what they're doing now. Well, yeah. I'm just saying they used to. Right. So I see, are you writing all some of these ideas down? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I see you writing. She is not. So, okay. Um, but let's go through the system and then if she's taking if she still is taking notes, then we'll have her jot down. But I know if we can start raising our hand because it's I have a, I have hearing loss in both my ears, so it's really hard for me to hear. Um, you had your hand raised. Yes. When you guys were talking about maybe bringing in a third person, when I drove for Kersley for a little bit, they would have like high school students that would like maybe ride with the elementary <coughs> to like be an aide to help with the elementary students. And it helped like a lot. Like the you know, they would walk up and down, tell the kids to sit down. But then you've got then to gotta walk around. around. Yeah. Yeah. That defeats the purpose of telling the child, well you can't walk up. Well, well they wouldn't you... no, they wouldn't be like walking up and down the aisle as you're driving. See, back in, the day, back in the day, we did. I don't know. I mean, I've been here 24 years. Back when I first started, I had a bus helper. Right, yeah. That did walk down, up and down my aisles, and, and then everything got to be so, you know. The only way, the only cheap. when they would walk up down the aisle is like if a kid was, you know, jumping out of their seat or right, doing what they, and they would, and remind yeah, them. go back and tell them, hey, you need to sit down for the, I mean, that's what they did at Kersley. So, Joe can write that down, but I would see that just from me. I could see that being a liability. There's a half. I mean, but. Uh, One word, we'll move on. It's a good idea. You know, when I figured out in driving a bus, and I've been driving for a little over a couple, well, a year and a half, so I figured out that we have to be smarter than the than the students. So so we can't let them outdo us. So now I got a system, my personal system. And so far, in the last few months, it's working. But everybody ain't going to do what I do. Well, share what it is. No. You pay them. I don't have $5 to give every kid on my bus. I don't. <laughs> Yes, but listen, listen what I do now. Listen, listen what happens. All right. When they do good, they got to do something good in order for me to 
give them $5. <laughs> it's funny. It's funny. It might be funny, but it's working. I ain't got to do all that hollering. I ain't, I ain't got to say, sit down, Joe, sit down, be still, no lie. So when I give one, they, the other one said, you, I might be next, so I'm going to. And that worked with the high school in the middle only. So every kid gets five dollars or do No, no, no. They, they Just every once drive? in a while. Every once in a while. I don't do it every day. I gave okay. a girl one five dollars a day. You know what she did? I stood up and when I got here to high school, I stood up, I said, Okay, Victoria, she gets the five dollars a day. You know why? Because I asked her to count the kids on the bus and she counted for me. So you never know when you do something good for the bus driver how you might get rewarded. So it's that secret I have. I'm thinking of uh, somebody, and if they're following the rules, they're going to get the answer. And it doesn't have to be $5. Oh, no. <laughs> That's what I choose to do. So we're going to hang out. We're going to hang out. What's your name, sir? James. James? So we're going to hang out to James' um, idea, and I want, and I love it. So we're going to do a spinoff on that when we get down to the ground. So I absolutely love it, and it's working. So. <laughs> Here is the system, okay? We have the big ideas at PBIS. And when you have to walk out of here, you're going to have to know all six of them. Okay. Uh, so you identify your expectations. What are the bus expectations? And they should be the same in every bus. Okay? That's the problem. Same in every bus. Because when you have subs come in, do they, they shouldn't have to learn... 16 different expectations. It should all be the same. And kids, sometimes you guys have to swap routes or whatever the case is, right? Or this bus, or um, this subdivision has to go on this bus today. Does that happen? Yeah. Okay. So what? those kids should have to learn how many different bus expectations. It should all be the same. And I just heard they're not all the same. So there we go. Teach the expectations. Yes, the teachers bring the kids on the bus and they do those teachings. Do they do a reteaching? Does it happen before Thanksgiving, before Christmas, after Christmas? Probably should have been done after this big, um, huge vacation of January. Um, so, are we reteaching the bus expectations? And then, how do you teach the expectations? How does that happen? So, you heard the bus driver um, on the video, he was doing pre corrects. And he was saying, remember, so he was, I think, coming into the school, when you get off the bus, make sure you blah, 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 blah. So he's pre-correcting. Um, so that is happening on the bus. For, um, is that happening, I guess I should say. So we're teaching. Oh, so we're teaching. Oh, it doesn't want to go down for me. And then you're monitoring. How do we monitor? Um, how do we scan? And that's where the active supervision comes in. And how do you guys do active supervision on the bus? We expect... Um, in the schools active supervision happens, and then on the buses. And when I first was going through this content, I'm like, come on, seriously? How do we expect bus drivers to actively supervise? They're driving a bus with like 30 kids on it. 30? But 30. 30. I don't know. I'm guessing 60, 70. 60, 70. 61. Um, so, and then I talked to a bus supervisor, and he goes, well, Kelly, he goes, there's actual legal things that they have to scan all their mirrors, and they have to do it within so many minutes. I'm like, phenomenal. This is great info. Yeah. And so him and I sat down, and he was supposed to be here today. He couldn't. Because um, actually, they didn't have enough bus drivers, so he, as a supervisor, went and took the route. Um, oh, Don't even look. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't need to be said. Did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> Can you repeat that, please? No, like, no, we need to. But that we is. Need you, um, but that's for the ISD. Um, oh, for well, yeah, oh, 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 So, yes. And I don't know, they have like three supervisors. I don't know. And then, let's see, acknowledgement. So that comes to James. How are we acknowledging? What are we doing? How are we doing four to one? We'll talk about four to one in a minute. And then how are we correcting behaviors? So it's the continuum of consequences. So that is that minor, major, what's office, what's bus handled. How do we do that? How do we respond to behavior? And then every referral that is written, it's not a form of, it's not, oh, I'm going to write this referral because we want a consequence or we want punishment. A referral is a piece of paper. Do you guys know the purpose of the referral? Paper trail. It's a paper trail, and it's data collection. It's all for data collection. And just because a referral is written does not mean it automatically means it's punishment 
or it is a given like well, consequence of detention yeah. or suspension. Well, to me, it's getting getting the point through to the principal, letting them know what's going on, or so a parent. Communication, communication, so it's That's documentation. It's, it's, yeah, documentation. it's not necessarily to get them kicked off. Right, just, and so but there's a lot of um, people that think, even like teachers, where I write the referral, I expect them to be suspended. I mean, if I, do, if I do five referral, a year, that's a lot, I think. They think referral, do consequence, that. like a negative consequence or punishment. And so I'm like, no, a referral is it's data collection. It's all about documentation and communication. Well, if the student was hitting somebody and just beating them to a pulp, then yeah, they need to go. I'm not talking about what the situation was. I am talking about just actual, what is a referral? What does it represent? What does it mean? So why have clear expectations? It creates universal language, which we said, common language. And we can all speak consistent language, right? We can all say, be safe, be respectful, be responsible. But what does that mean? We have common understanding. And then it increases consistency across settings. Um, in your case, if you have kids coming from one bus to another, or you have to swap routes, or whatever the case is, you already know going into somebody else's bus you know what the expectations are. You know what the system is. You know what the, uh, the continued consequences are. You know the system because you have consistency. Helps right. adults solve problems with students. Um, so this is for us. So how do we solve problems? How do we solve the kicking or the, uh, the biting, the punching, jumping over the seats, etc.? And then it changes the climate. Okay, if we have a positive climate on that bus. And that one, the bus driver from Vancouver, he said, he goes, kids are like surprised because here I'm an adult, I'm not yelling, I'm just talking in a calm voice. And we, when we offer corrections or miss, when someone's doing something wrong, if we scream and yell, you're going to get nowhere. And I understand you have to probably be louder because sometimes the buses are louder than a normal setting, right? So you're going to have to be a little bit louder, but if you're screaming, it's not going to have any impact. It's actually going to do harm because it's going to, if you have a relationship with that student or a connection or starting to build, it's going to rip that apart. So it's going to create negative, a negative piece. So here's Kyle's expectations. Um, you have pride. You have positive, respect, independent, depend dependable, and engaged learners. So they use pride. And I don't know if pride has not came onto the buses, correct? No. So I did for a very brief time. Right. Did we get little tickets? A couple of years ago. Pride yeah, cards. Last year. Yeah. Yeah. So I know talking to Jessica, I know the tickets. Very brief. The tickets are not, it's not consistent. Mm -hmm. It didn't continue on. So pride, is that something that we want? Because the kids all know pride. Yeah. They speak pride. They know what each of those mean. They know what they mean in the cafeteria, they know what they mean in the hallway, in the classroom, etc. So would it make sense that pride comes to the bus? Mm -hmm. And that's something you guys can talk about and um, Jill can take note and have that conversation. But that would be that consistency, common understanding, common language. Okay. Um, and so how do you post those? Do you guys have on the buses anywhere like right now, I'm going to call them the three Bs, right? Just the be respectful, be safe, response. But do you guys have anything posted? Yeah. No, just the rule. Well, yeah, the, the rules. basic bus rules are, should be on everybody's yeah. bus. Yeah. Okay. So <coughs> if we add pride, then it would say pride, and it would say be positive, and it would how, how do you show positivity on the bus? How do you show respect? What does it look like? What's it sound like? Independent. Okay, pick your seat independently. Obviously, if there's multiple referrals and issues, the kid probably doesn't have a signed seat. But eventually, can he go back to be independent by picking his own seat? Sure. Nope. No. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, so never mind. <laughs> so, I have to stay. Yeah. So some some school every school is different. Some people the kids get their own seats. Whatever. Um. And then so how what does that look like? Engaged learners that might not apply to you on the bus. I don't know for those kids. But you might be able to brainstorm and come up with something that fits in that. Um. So how, what do those look like on the bus now, or what do you need to adjust? Um, a lot of people make videos 
Um, they have the bus drivers make a video of what's appropriate behavior, what's unappropriate behavior, and those are shared out in the schools. <laughs> We so should so awesome. do, we that. Want to do that. We want to do that. <laughs> so there nice. is tons of videos on YouTube. Nice some of them are really bad, some of them are pretty good. I can tell you the ones that are uh, the ones that are I'm a kind of liberal corny or whatever. Um, they get really silly and the kids focus on what behavior? The bad behavior. Yeah. Um, so I'm like, ah, can't use that one. Because it's like, uh, if we go out and say, okay, this is how we walk outside to the buses, and say you have this big tree, and a non-example that we show is climbing a tree, because we want the extreme for a non-example, you'll see kids climbing trees. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. So, laughs> it's kind of like the non-examples. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you want to be like, just a little, like in the gray area. So like walk, walk and speed walk. We want to walk, okay? And then give them the non-example of speed walking. Um, that was just a, uh, let's see, role playing that can be done in a video, or and this could be what the how the teachers bring on and um, teach expectations. And then how will you do your gotchas? Do you have principal and teacher buy in as well? So teach them. How do you teach them? Um, um, so you have the matrix. Again, the schools already have the matrix set up for you. Should the schools have the same thing? for bus expectations. What is the matrix for the bus? Okay, Getting on the bus and off the bus might look differently at every school. And once they get off, step off your bus, what's that look like and what's, how do you um, get on the bus? But bus behavior for that matrix should look the same for in every school. I would say, yeah. Because what you expect of a kindergartner to sit down in their seat, not eat, whatever the case may be, you would expect it for the sixth grader too, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. I would hope so. so again, there's that consistency, common language. Right? Um, and we want to teach the behaviors in the actual setting. Elementary is already doing this. High school, middle school are not. And they could have a video instead. They could have teachers or bus drivers create videos and teach it that way. Um, so we teach where it happens. We just talked about that. Um, so here is a matrix. Um, and they just had to be safe, be responsible, be responsible. So it has loading and unloading. Uh, so like be safe, go directly to your seat as assigned by the driver. Uh, stay in the seat until the bus comes to a complete stop. Stay in a single file line. Um, move in and out of danger zone safely. While the bus is moving, sit safely with your back to the back, back to, to the back, and your bottom to the bottom. A voice level. A lot of buses. You guys have voice levels on your bus? <laughs> like they have. Loud. I've seen some where they have them identified. One, two, so, three, four. Yeah. And so, if they're at a four, it's probably like okay, out of control, right? Mm -hmm. um, a two is maybe talking or whatever. Do you guys all have radios on your bus? Like they can listen to music. Uh, that's something that we should okay. also get. Um, I was going to say, because the consequence, if you're not at a level two, then the radio is turned off. Um, so be respectful, allow the personal space, respect bus property, or property of others, that would be bus two. Keep interactions G-rated. No hugging, kissing, or public display of affection, because that happens on buses. Um, Use appropriate language, and they're responsible to clean up after yourself. Yeah. So this is an example of a matrix. It does not mean it has to be what Kyle was, but that's just an example. Um, and this is why I want you guys to read through the bus matrix in Kyle, but um, at the, after the snow day, I think Jessica probably forgot to bring those. So that's okay. So, um, so in, I think I skipped this activity. I did. But well, let's just show of hands, no learning out because I can't hear. Um, what are some ideas or what are some things that you absolutely want on a matrix? Let's talk about uh, being safe. What are two things you would absolutely want on there for being safe? Sit down. Okay. Sit, sit, down. So, sit down. Okay, stay in, so stay, stay in seat. And we want, remember, to positively say them, so stay in seat. Okay, what else? Hands to yourself. Hands to self. So those are some on there. So what about being responsible? <coughs> this side. 
What would you guys want for her? Oh, she's so excited. <laughs> Don't forget your backpack or your boots or your shoes or your belongings. <laughs> okay, so Don't take so take belongings <laughs> with you. Yeah. So instead of using dope, take belongings with you. And you can put the IE backpack, boots, whatever. Um, what else? What's something else for a responsible? Fresh and trash. Yeah. Put your windows up. Oh, put yes. windows up. There you go. Okay. Um, what did I forget? Safe, responsible, respect. Respectful. <laughs> Respectful. So what, what are, what's one that you would put on there for your boss? For respect? Pass. Shh. Treat people like you treat them yourself. Thank you. So I heard a lot of people talk about swearing earlier. So use appropriate language would be one, right? What else for respect? Say good morning when we say good morning. Yeah. Good luck. Have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. So, My kids do that yeah. so use manners. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So you said we already talked about this throughout here. So we're bus expectations taught. We already went through this. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do the students have this kind of setting, like what you te teaching us? Shouldn't they know this? Wouldn't they get it better in a setting like this than for us to give them a paper or, or tell them what the rules are? So they do a kickoff at the beginning of the school year? About this. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Yeah, but just the elementary. Middle school. Middle school. So I don't know. I know elementary do a kickoff. Middle school and high school, they, part of the uh, PPSC is doing a big kickoff. I don't know what middle school and high school does, but just from hearing, I know elementaries. Do you want to take the buses yeah. over? Yeah. <coughs> Kristen. So, um, yeah, so they do that. So that could be something that are all schools doing the um, kickoff or teaching expectations. So how do we monitor? We already talked about this. Classroom is easy because they have the instruction. Non-classroom, you have a large number of unpredictable students. You guys have a large number, number of unpredictable students every day? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. What is their focus? Is that academics? No. no. Social. No. Um, so they're very much, especially older kids, they're not concerned really about pleasing adults because they want to please. They're their their peers. Okay? Um, this just lists where non fashion settings are. Uh, so active supervision, movement, scanning, interact, pre-corrections, positive reinforcement of expected behavior. So scanning is supposed to be heads up, eye contact, uh, body position. So how does this work on buses? How does this work? So they without, know I, they know without I talking scan. about the barriers. They know I scan because when I look in the mirror, they're staring at me. I'm like, okay, what do you do? So they know it's coming. I you. <laughs> so for my own pre correct and we don't need to go all through the barriers, there's absolutely no aids on any buses. No. no. Okay. No. So it's just you. Okay. So how does scanning take place? What is what does the law say about scanning? Check all your mirrors at a consistent speed. Is it um? Is there? It has to happen, in so like after a certain time frame or anything like that. I just do it. I don't know how often you're supposed to. But I just constantly. Yeah. It's you just get to have them doing it, and it's like you're constantly doing it. Do you know, Jill? Do you know if there is? I I'm not. I can't remember the time frame, but I know there is one. Yes. Um, yeah, there is one. But a lot of that time, you're spending more time looking at the road and in your mirrors than you're paying attention to the kids behind right. you. Yeah. Well, you. I gotta, mean, you have you your student mirror. You have your student mirror, which is part of the whole rotation. Yes. But I would say probably most of these drivers spend most of their time in their student mirror. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so obviously you guys are driving. So when can you stop and look and do a scan? Regardless of the time frame. Lights. Lights. Stop. 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 Right. You can pull over. Okay, I'm just so saying, you better right. pull that bus over. I did it many times when I was driving bus. Doing what? Oh, yeah, oh, oh, the oh, hardest part is you can't get out of your seat. Really? I do. Why can't you get out of your seat if you're pulled over the side of the road? Some, I do, but sometimes you're, you have to drive, so you're stuck in your seat. My last yeah, stop is yeah. every day. Yeah. Yeah. Just get out of my yeah. seat every yeah. day. No, go somebody be like, hey, you need to sit down. Go back and wait. Then you. Two oh, minutes later, you do it again. Oh. So it would be for big ones, like so. If we we're doing this 
preventative work and you're doing some pre-correct and you do you guys have you guys all have the little mics, right? No, no. Only, no. Have, only like well, not all the buses. Well, buses but the radios have those cool mics on okay. other buses. So yeah. how do you do pre-correct? And it could be if you're having to repeat yourself multiple times, then we know that we need to do reteaching or pre-correct. So um so if you have to do that often, then you might want to stop the bus and go through it and reteach mm -hmm. and then keep on moving. And they're probably going to get sick and tired of you stopping that bus, right? Mm -hmm. Or they might be a little bit late for school. They don't care about that. They do care about that because you have kids that have such anxiety about being late to school. Even though they show you they don't care, their schedule's off, and they have to catch up, walk into a classroom, and they're being late. So they absolutely do care about being late. And why else would they care about being late? Some of them eat breakfast at school. Eat breakfast? Yeah. And who's at school? And if they're not? They're friends. They're friends. So 100% they care. Okay? So, how, yes. I think sometimes we're, we as bus drivers are so concerned about a parent what the parents going to say, what the administrators are going to say, that we're afraid to control our bus. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, that's true. I, you have been great as far yeah. as standing yeah. behind us, but we have had bosses We're like, that would throw us literally under, under the, the bus. bus. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I drove bus. I, I get it. I get it. I was probably one of the meaner bus drivers in our township, <laughs> you know, but I set the expectation right from day one. But I think, I think a lot of times I might be getting off track, but um, I think we're so afraid of what somebody's gonna say that we're afraid to control our bus. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not you know, there are drivers that are though. Oh, I, I, had, I had one little girl, just for instance, the other day, she's, she's known for taking other kids' stuff. Mm -hmm. And I literally watched her pick up this hat off the floor, another little girl's hat, and put it in her book bag. And I told her, give it back. I don't have it. I said, yes, you do. Mm -hmm. I don't have it. I pulled my bus over, and I got in her bag. And some people will say, I wouldn't yeah. have never done that. Right. I just did that. But I, I, seen, to a kid. I seen her put it in there, mm -hmm. and she was fighting me the whole way. She's a kindergartner. And <laughs> well known kindergartner at that, you know. Uh -huh. And that was it. And I dropped her off. I said, she's angry with me, Mom. I said, I got in her bag and took something that she took from another student. And I think a lot of times when you get to the stop and you've had to address, you know, a child, nine times out of ten there's a parent there. Okay, eight times out of ten there's a parent there. Okay, so if you, I think if you address it with a parent nicely and professionally, I think most of the time it's going to be a mute point. But you gotta, you gotta learn to control your bus and don't be afraid to control. You're not gonna hit somebody. You're not gonna do, you know. Um, but I think you need to, you need to be more. I don't know. Not, but don't be so afraid. Don't be so afraid to take care of your bus. Afraid? 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 I mean, being on a time thing with this that you grabbed and hit them and find out you've got the cops waiting for you when you come back. You wonder why we don't say stuff? That, uh, that happened, happened to me, believe it or not. I told a student to sit down. I said, you cannot be up. You're going to get hurt. If Miss Barton has to hit her brakes hard, you are going to go flying and you could go. I to think that's, I mean, well, those, those are the ones check. that. Those are the ones that you deal with. That I mean, that's not typical. You know, no. I think most parents he honest. That kid because he does it all the time. Okay, I'm sorry, but that's okay. one last thing. Most parents that call and complain about the drivers with their kids, probably about eighty percent of the time, it's worked over by the time I get off the phone with them, mm -hmm. unless the driver's done something really crazy and I go, oh, shit, <laughs> you know? But most of the time it's it's taken care of before we get off the phone. So uh, that's all I got to say. You always got parents that their kids wouldn't do that. Their oh, I get it. Oh, yeah, I get it. I get it. And then you pull the camera like this. Yes. And this is when the huh. parents could yeah. see yeah. the video. And well, and well, that's my not my last name is Craig. Yes, exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I said, you want to see a picture of my husband. <laughs> Obviously, we talked about you can't get up and move all the time. Right. So how do we move? 
Now, talking with some other bus drivers, and I actually had bus drivers come in and sit down with me, and I said, okay, let's go over this. Part of active engagement, or act I did active engagement, sorry. Active supervision is um, moving. So how does that look like on buses? He's like, well, he goes, um, when you are uh, waiting for kids to get on the bus, and I don't know if you guys have different roles. He goes, you can stand outside the door, and you're talking or whatever, and he goes, and then you can go inside and walk up and down those aisles to make sure people are doing their stuff. So that is moving. And you want to make it unpredictable. You don't want to have the same routine every single day. Because just like if I was in a classroom and I spent most of my time over here, you guys would say, oh, she's over on that side, and these girls are here like, oh, look at the Snapchat. Um, so they will know my routine. Um, so on the bus, you can do that. Um, you can also, if you need to get up and during um, a stop, you're picking up, Little Susie, can you get out of your seat and go to the back of the bus where there's some behaviors that are happening? Yep. Okay. So you can do that. Can it be unpredictable? Maybe there's not any behaviors happening. Maybe everything is going great, but yet you make a stop. You're going to get up and you're going to do a move and you're going to do a quick scan, make sure everything is happening. Quickly walk back. To your seat. So we're allowed to do that when you stop and your lights are flashing on Linden Road when you no. have a bunch of. No, 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 you can't be doing no. that to begin with. I mean, I'm still kind of new here. So. so here's the thing. Here's the thing, though. You guys are worried about behaviors, and I have all these, have all these behaviors happening. But if you don't do preventative work, you'll still have all these behaviors happening. Because we can only control what we can control. And you can control what happens on your boss and what you do. So, when can you do the most? Do you have to pull the bus over? And if, yeah. yes. Not always, but sometimes. So, and if you, and if you do some of these, um, get up and move during a stop, do you have to continue doing it all the time? No. No. Absolutely not. It's like as, um, think about something. Uh, let me try to think. My daughter, okay, taught her how to do laundry. I had to keep walking her through it, and I'd always have to go back and do a check. Okay, did she do it right? But now... I don't check as often, and she just does it because I taught. And, and she knows. Pink? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have pink clothes. Or white or white. Um, the same thing in a classroom. I teach procedures and routines at the beginning of the year. I talk about them throughout the year, but I don't have to keep doing those same things over and over and over because I taught them. They knew that if these behaviors do happen, I'm going to move. I'm going to move, and I'm going to come over there. And if we need to go back and do things over again, we will. But not saying you have to do every stop, no. But if it's unpredictable and you don't do it all the time, then yes. Does my daughter's bus, my elementary bus, show up every day at 4.15? No. Some days it's there at 4.10. Some days it's there at 4.30. And you're still there waiting for the kid? Am I? <laughs> 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 no, my mama's. Oh. <laughs> sure. Right. And so, and do I have to be out there waiting? No. Um, but I'm saying the, that bus doesn't show up exactly at 4.15 every day. Mm -hmm. It's sometimes early, sometimes late. Now, if it's like 30 minutes late, I probably get a little worried. But, some, you know, I give them always 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Well, that's our rule. 10 minutes for, 10 minutes yeah. after. Mm -hmm. So, time to take. Yeah. yeah. I'm one of those rule followers like you talk about. So we're not, okay, so it's okay, I mean, this is to you or it's not, so we're not, we're supposed to be able to walk through our bus, but then we're also supposed to take our key yeah. when we get off the bus, and we're not supposed to stand outside the bus when you have kids on the bus, the kids should not be on the bus without you, yeah. so there's so many different rules, that prevents us, they what, yes. you know, my what my one can you follow, without, something happening to you just right. so that would be not that i'm being selfish right but. no and so that's something that i cannot change or control that's just these are some this is information you hear the information she's hearing information so it's kind of like okay let's go back and rethink some of these things how can this apply to kyle yes this is our policy but how can we apply this or no we can't do this because this is our policy but what can we do instead so this isn't you have to do everything like this absolutely not but what is your policy? How can we adjust if we need to adjust? Or what can we do differently so we're hitting these things without adjusting our policy? So it's just the teaching aspect, and then what are our next steps? What do we need to reflect on? What do we need to do differently, and what can we do? Okay? 
And that's how I cannot make those, I cannot give you those answers. And I can't make those changes. All I can do is, here's the information. But, but you're spot on. There's probably things in here thinking, oh, we can't do that because. Well, they're and, not only Kyle policy, some of them are law, you know, state right. laws, right. federal, you know, different right. laws. Right, like so then, so then having those conversations and saying, okay, how do we do active supervision with following law? How do we get up and move? How do we how do we watch our kids? Because those ones sitting way in the back, I used to sit way in the back. I mean, you know what I tell them? We used to tell dirty jokes and everything. I tell them, you see those cameras? I said, they can hear you too. I said, right. not only that, I said, but the principal can get on her computer. And she can beam in on you at any time. You've and never. I, I, I also tell you to get in cameras. What? The they cameras, know. they can see. I don't know. I said that. Get in cameras. I said, hey, this is your first time. All right. So I want to get back to uh, James. James. I want to get back to James because how he acknowledges. Okay? So he has a system. Is his, sis and his system. You guys don't have to follow his system. Does his system work? It works for him. It yeah. works for him, right? You could even do something as a simple can of pop. Correct. But wouldn't it be nice if, you guys talked about the tickets, would it be nice if we had a consistent system? Now you can yeah. have your own, he can c continue on with that system. And if it's working, I would continue on. Okay? But would it be nice if we all had one system? You guys talked about the tickets. If we brought back the tickets, you Must find them on your bus floors. All yeah. of them. So, yeah. I, well, <laughs> so, but that is that is teaching expectations. I will not see these on the on the floor. Okay, etc. I had we had high school kids. We had business cards. Absolutely loved them. Did not see them on the hallway floor. But we what? But we also had a system of what these business cards would add up to, and etc. And they did not want to lose those. Because right. that's what we didn't have. We just had where it was actually a community-wide thing, where the gas station would give out these tickets if they seen a student, and then they got entered in for like a bicycle. Okay. Once a quarter or something so like that. It could they be never where, followed up on it. So it could be where the tickets are brought back to the school. We did? And yeah, us. it was like last year. Yep. Brought back so we need something that's just for the buses. So working with, um, she, I never did the bus training at Kersley, but um, she was a bus driver at Kersley. And she did individual tickets yeah. on her bus. So kind of like what you do, someone was doing something great, she would give them a ticket all the time. She'd give them a ticket. Oh, thank you so much for sitting in your seat today. Here's a ticket. And it would, um, and she wouldn't do like 50 of the kids. She would just find one and give it to him. So he would put his um, ticket in a jar. And then like at the end of the week or whatever, um, she'd pull a ticket and they got $5 or got a candy bar or a slushy or whatever the case was. Now, she did that out of her own good. Okay, um, so that's something you can bring back and talk about our next our next action step. What are we going to do next? What would be our acknowledgement system? If you brought back, are they called Mustang bucks or something? Yeah, they're all so on the floor. Okay. So if you bring that back, and that's a problem on the floor. So how do you pre-correct that? What do you do? You put their names on it. You find it on the floor. There you go. You deal with it. But then you got to find time to put the names on. Right. So there's <laughs> always there's always yeah. going to be something for something. But, so looking at that, what is our acknowledgement system? And a four to one. So we have kids that come on your bus, and they just, they come from a, maybe a crappy situation that just, just took place, right, at home. A fight, didn't have breakfast or whatever. They hop on your bus, and what? They're already, like, upset, right? Ready to fire at anybody. But four to one. You should have four positives to one negative. So... If you give somebody a mis mis uh, sorry a correction, if I say, Johnny, sit down in your seat, and I say it in a nice way, sit down in your seat, that is a correction. By the end of the day, he needs to have four positives for that one correction, not just by me, but say you guys are his teachers, I would hope that you'd get some four positives throughout that day. So, one correction needs to have four positives. <laughs> and they did a study on marriages and they really watched, and the uh, marriages that did, um, they didn't have the four corrections to one negative. What happened to those people? Divorced. Divorced. Really? There was a study. So, <laughs> 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 so did your positives. <laughs> I'm sorry. Shit. Shh. 
Gosh. Does your positives necessarily have to be on behavior, or can a positive be like, hey, I like your hat, or like Bingo. something? So you have contingent and non-contingent. Contingent would be, thank you so much for sitting down in your seat. I love that you follow the um, safety rule. Um, so that's one. I love that sweater today. It looks great. That's two. I got a student on my bus when I first started. He every day. They too loud, Mr. James. They too loud. They too loud. He did day in and day out. So you know what I did? I bought him some earmuffs. <laughs> <laughs> he wearing them every day. He get on the bus. Where my earmuffs? I give him to him. James, I need some money. He, he <laughs> and he said yeah. that. He said that and be real quiet. Yeah. That's a great idea. But when you Enjoy. have a sub. Is there earmuffs there? They, I leave them on the bus. Okay. I don't let him take them home. I've got I leave them. When he get off, he give them to me. When he get on, I give them back. Too. Leave them on the bus. Oh, sure. I love they James. Right James, James is a sticker. Yeah. Yeah. But, Making us all look but bad. He, but he's really he's looking at the situation and going, how can I fix this? How can yeah. I fix it? Now, if he would have went into the school and said, hey, I don't, I don't know for sure, but this kid needs a pair of earmuffs. I mean, you can go to the dollar store and get them for a dollar. Um, would the school maybe be able to find earmuffs? Probably. Probably so, but they wouldn't have did me much good. I mean, because I wanted to get good rapport with him he personally. Built that connection. He so now he, he he talks to me real. You know, we talk. We have a conversation. Right. Mm -hmm. So trust. I'm gonna go to trust. He built trust and made that connection. With any situation, I don't care what business you're in. If you're a teacher, if you are in corporate, whatever the case is. Relationships have to happen. If you do not build relationships, you will not build trust. If you don't build trust, you don't build, an, or there won't be motivation. Motivation leads to innovation and taking risks. Um, so relationships. If you don't build relationships, which he did with the um, little boy and the boss, and now that the kid trusts him, is he probably going to have any flirting now? They're too loud. They're too loud. No, because he built the trust, and the kid's probably going to go to him and have a conversation. He told me about his parents, too. They divorced. They open up. Oh, yeah. yeah. They open up, absolutely. Yeah, and sometimes you're like, oh, no, no, honey. I want to hear it all. I'm just that kind of No, I don't want to hear it all. I want to hear some of this stuff. But when you don't, come on, sit down and talk. You can still listen. You can still listen, but just to say, don't give me so much detail.
he went from a D to a C plus in a semester because he built the connection with her. And that's in a school, but can that happen on the bus? Absolutely. Proven point right there with the earmuff. <coughs> okay. earmuff. Yeah, you had earmuffs on your dash. Right? You so, see I wondered about it. <laughs> So, <laughs> 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 he just says they're for our kids. <laughs> 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 okay. So, how do we encourage positive behavior, or why do we do it? Obviously, it uh, focuses attention on desired behaviors instead of the negative behaviors. Um, and I love this. It says it's a note from my school bus driver. He wants all kids to stop eating sugar coated cereal for breakfast. He says he can't handle 30 sugar highs. <laughs> and, Amen. So there you go. Uh, so it's what you guys want to do is just like the classroom, we want to decrease behaviors because we want to increase instructional time on the bus. We want to decrease behaviors so we can get kids to and from places safely. Right? That's the goal to get them from one place to the next safely and without losing our insanity, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> so, um, so it's building those relationships. It's doing those things, the four to one. If I can't stress enough, how we talk to kids and what we say to them makes a huge, huge difference. Huge. And if we are constantly correcting, 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 um, how many of you are married? You, guys, you don't have to tell me if you want to, but... Um, if, if I, I would say, how, if you are, if someone is correcting you over and over and over and over and over, they're no longer trying to help you, what are they doing? They're nagging. They're nagging. Because they So, so my husband will always, he writes my Kelly, you're nagging. Because with him, I'm like, Tony, you gotta go do, Tony, Tony, Tony. He's like, stop nagging. But that's what happens. Because once we... Correct, 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 correct. Tell, 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 tell. They tune us out and they can care less what we say. Because now we went from like someone trying to help to somebody nagging. And so that's why this work is important to have a system and prevent. And then how do we give positive acknowledgement? How do we talk to kids? How do we do the four to one and build those relationships? Yes. I just going back to when I was driving and the screaming and the yell. We didn't have those little microphones, so we had to yell. Yeah. You know, and I got so tired of yelling all the time. Yeah. And you know what's really funny is when they pick up the wrong mic. So then, before I left the school, I knew who were my problem kids were, right? So I would go sit with them, just in their seat, and I would talk to them. Now, this is what needs to happen today, because I'm not going to yell at you. You know, you know, just in that tone of voice, because they don't hear you screaming. Right. But right. when you get down and you lower your tone of voice, mm -hmm. kind of like when you use your dog, I mean, it, right. it truly it is. Um, you have to get down to their level and speak to them in a lower tone of voice. I mean, that's <coughs> how, what helped me. Mm -hmm. The screaming didn't help. That is just no good. Sometimes it just so, makes you feel better, so, <laughs> it doesn't, though, ultimately, ultimately, you're just going to keep doing it. You're going to keep doing it because you yeah. didn't do any reteaching. You're just, the more behavior you tend to, the more behavior I mean, you're seeing. So the more you keep yelling, yeah. you're going to continue yelling. I mean, you all know who your kids are, the two or three or four of them that you need to talk to before you leave school. Kind of like talking to them in their own language. Yeah. There's one so. I need to talk to before I even pull up. So, Sorry, and one thing that I, I one thing that I love about your guys' job that I absolutely love is that you are the first person that the kid sees at the beginning of the day and you're the last person they see at the end of the day. So you guys can make a huge positive impact on the students' um, school day. And I know my daughter Ashley loves her bus driver. She only rides a bus on the way home to my mom's. But she gives her bus driver a hug goodbye Aww. every day. Mm -hmm. She makes her cards, etc. Um, I mean, she's a sweetheart, love her dearly. But she loves her. She loves her bus driver. Um, and I love the fact that the bus driver always says <coughs> goodbye to her, and she um, she has that connection with Emery. And I love that uh, because I know if my daughter had a bad day at school because she's very, has high anxiety and she likes everything to be like OCD and sometimes it doesn't happen that way at school. 
but she ends that day with a hug from her bus driver. Okay, and I know we can't all be touchy feely with the bus drivers, and I'm a parent that it's okay. Um, but I know that she ends her day with a positive with that bus driver every single day. And that makes me happy. Um, but you guys see those kids every morning and every night. And you can start their day with positivity and end their day with something positive. Teachers can't do that. They don't see them beginning at the end. Principals can't do that. You guys have the benefit and the glory of having that opportunity. You and may be the only one that says good morning to them yes. all day. Mm -hmm. That's a positive right. thing. Even if they don't say it back, mm -hmm. one day they will. One day they will. What's that? They have to take your headphones off. <laughs> you know what? But you saying it, they can see you saying something. Or even if, a, if you could do fist bumps, high fives, that's something positive. And they might not acknowledge it, but they, but they do. And a lot of kids internalize things so much. You would be surprised that the kids internalize things more than they externalize. And you doing something positive, they may be internalizing it. And that's okay, and that's where we as adults have to take our emotion out of it, out of the picture, and just know that we did something positive for that kid. I know we are up on time. One thing that I do want to do real quick, just for a takeaway, and I can talk to Jill afterwards about some action items. Um, you guys had a lot of great points. Uh, you guys have some barriers. We're not a barrier-free world, so there are barriers in every system, everything we do. So I'm going to do a whip and pass. So I'm going to start on this side. And I want you to talk about one thing that you could implement today or tomorrow on your next route or in a how, like, oh, I never thought of that before. I never thought of that way before. So either something you can implement on your next route or tomorrow's route or a takeaway. I don't have no more. route anymore. <laughs> so what is a takeaway that you, get, you took from this? Uh, I already do most of this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am the best bus driver ever. So, so if you did that every day, you wouldn't have to I don't. You check 22 years. I've had probably about oh, 10 right. years. Six years. Six years. Whip or pass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna no problem. I know. 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 I Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah, um, that I know when I do routes for the little elementary kids, um, throughout the route I'll say, hands to ourselves in your seat, and I'm like, are you hands to yourself? Yes! You know, are you sitting down? Yes! You know, are you happy? Yes! You know, that kind of thing. So I do that on elementary routes for the high school, middle school. So the high school, middle school, I say, hey, it's Friday, everybody happy? Woo! You know, so I mean, and I tell them the same thing, you know, have a good night, have a good weekend, that kind of stuff. Well, I do the same yeah. thing on that. I, every morning I speak to speak to all of them, and, uh, and and at the beginning I notice a great big change. That when you speak, when you say good morning or, or have a nice night or something like that, it was just a few doing it at first, but now almost all my bus does that now. Just, so, just don't so tell any other kids. Don't let that system of yours leak out to the other kids that ride the other buses. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, well, I don't know. That's on you. <laughs> Yeah, I say happy birthday. I, I think birthday. if you get to know your kids and you and you become um, engaging with them, know what they do, how how'd you play in your game last yes. night, um, how did cheerleading go, um, whatever, that goes a long way to having that relationship with your kids. I like James's idea. I'll, I'll implement it. You know, figure out, figure out. First of all, figure out who the problem kid is, and then give him a task. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, try to focus away from. Perfect. Excellent. I like Jill's idea of maybe like. I was gonna sit, say that. Yeah, sitting down. <laughs> of, of like sitting down and like talking to the student one on one because yeah. yelling. Doesn't well, I was work. always told. It before. hurts your voice, and I don't really have a stern like yelling voice. Anyway. No. No, you no. don't. No. Shut up. So. <laughs> If you've got a problem and you stand up and the kids this big and you know you're way up here, they're they're scared. Yeah. You know, they're, so if you get down on their level. Yeah. Terry. 
Terry. Terry's nice. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Like that. Yeah. I, mean, I used to, but then the kids were throwing wrappers on the floor and yeah. not appreciative. So, so yeah. you give it to them on their way out the bus. Yeah. Right. So, so the natural consequence would be like, no more. Right. And if yeah. you don't have trash, I'll bring it back. Right. Yeah. Same thing. I would like to do some kind of reward or acknowledgement kind of deal. I would like to see it where everybody does it, but. Right. Okay. Dr. Cohen answered the question. I am going to also bribe my children. Communication. <laughs> 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 More communication. Love it. Yeah. I have a radio on my bus, and I like the idea. With my elementary, I don't let them listen to it. But if the maybe I will start, oh. and if the sound level gets above two, it's going to be turned off. Perfect. That's excellent. Yeah. Pass. Up, All right, pass. Karen. Karen. Pass, pass, pass. I do the good morning and goodbye and all that. And I, I do the reward my kids and treat them. See the reward. And if I find trash in my seat, I put it in the dash. You know, like Ooh. a baggie. And I'm like, okay, this is yours. Like, I'm sorry. That's what we could be. Sorry. How are you doing? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you.